pra Oslo, pra sair no Oslo do Logo a Oslo, da terra da do bacalhau. Oi, tudo bem? Welcome to this 12th lesson in the special series I'm creating to help you to jumpstart your Brazilian Portuguese. I'm Professor Jason, and the topic of my lesson today is using descriptive adjectives. So what I'm going to do is cover some of the most common ways, kind of patterns and structures, in which these descriptive words or adjectives are used, particularly after the verbs ser and estar. I'll also talk a little bit about the past participle forms. Those are those verb forms that tend to end in ado and idu, and how they can function as adjectives as well. So I'm going to do my best to keep things simple, straightforward, and organized. But as usual, we've got a lot to cover. Então, vamos começar. Let's get started. Okay, so as usual, I want to kick the lesson off just sort of with an overview so that you know what to expect. We'll start off by just reviewing the definition of adjectives. What are they? It's not a trick question, so we won't spend a lot of time on that. We will talk a little bit about determiners, which is another word class that often gets confused or sort of lumped in with adjectives because they behave in much the same way. We'll also talk about the concept of agreement, right? The idea that both determiners and adjectives must agree in Brazilian Portuguese in number and gender with the nouns that they right, specify or modify. We're going to spend a little bit more time on the fourth and fifth points, right? Point number four, we're going to look at some of the common structures, situations, or contexts in which we use descriptive adjectives, particularly after the verbs ser and estar, since those can be confusing to learners of Portuguese. And finally, we'll focus on the past participle forms of verbs, right? those forms that end in ado and idu, and how those can function as adjectives too. All right, so as promised, the very first topic, adjectives, what are they? I assume most of you know this, so I won't spend too much time. Adjectives, of course, are words we use to modify nouns. So they express the attributes of people, places, or things, including abstract concepts. And these attributes or traits can be things that are permanent, sort of inherent characteristics, or they can be things that are just temporary states or conditions. So he's wearing a cheap tie. The noun is tie. Cheap is the adjective that modifies it. We want to live in a big city. City's the noun. Big is the adjective that modifies that. So in English, typically, the adjectives come right before the nouns. Oil is not a renewable resource. Again, resource is the noun. Renewable is the adjective that modifies that. Sometimes after the, a form of the verb to be, right, the noun comes first. Her boyfriend, there's our noun, is very jealous. That's our adjective. Similarly, math is hard, right? Or his parents are funny and smart. We have two adjectives there, modifying the noun parents, which comes before them. And then finally, just to throw in an example of a temporary physical condition, that dog is tired. So those are adjectives in English. Now let's look at those exact same examples translated into Portuguese and see if we learn anything, right? So he's wearing a cheap tie. Ele está usando uma gravata barata. Or we want to live in a big city. Nós queremos viver em uma cidade grande. O petróleo não é um recurso renovável. So in those three examples, we have the cheap tie, big city, renewable resource. Notice that in Portuguese, the order of the adjective and the noun are flipped. So the, the adjective actually comes after the noun, right? Fourth example, o namorado dela é muito ciumento. Very similar word order to the English. Her boyfriend is very jealous. Or, matemática é difícil. That's very true, for me at least, right? Matemática é difícil. Os pais dele são engraçados e inteligentes. And then finally, aquele cachorro está cansado. So the main takeaway here is that the adjectives, when you have that noun adjective or adjective noun formation, the adjectives follow the nouns in, in Brazilian Portuguese. All right, moving on to determiners. What are they? Well, determiners are words we use to determine or specify which noun we're referring to in a particular context. So these include things like definite articles, the word for the, right? Indefinite articles, words like a, an, or some, or in Portuguese, um, uns, uma, umas. Demonstratives, possessives, and quantifiers. Numerals, and some interrogative words. You can see examples of these on the, on the slide. 
Now again, the function of determiners like these has more to do with specification than with description per se. However, because they tend to behave very much like adjectives, as we'll see, they're often classified or explained alongside adjectives. So let's look at some examples of determiners in Brazilian Portuguese. Ainda não li as revistas que comprei ontem. Here, as, the definite article, is a determiner, right? It's specifying the magazines. Or, minha tia vendeu a sua casa. Her house. Você já viu esse filme? Right, that's the demonstrative determiner. That movie. Have you seen that movie? Ela quer comprar duas blusas. Here we have a numeral. Two shirts. Havia poucas pessoas. Few people, a quantifier. Havia poucas pessoas no restaurante. Or an interrogative functioning as a determiner. Quantos alunos passaram na prova? We have the definite article, a prova. So we can learn a couple things from examples like these, seeing it kind of play out in Brazilian Portuguese. First, just like adjectives, determiners in Portuguese have to agree in number and gender with the nouns they specify. However, one difference between determiners and adjectives is that determiners precede, precede, come before the nouns they specify, whereas in Portuguese, adjectives usually follow the nouns they modify. All right, we just saw a few examples of how determiners agree in number and gender with the nouns they indicate. The same is, of course, true with all adjectives in Brazilian Portuguese. As we discussed back in lesson four, in Portuguese grammar, nouns are either masculine or feminine, and they're also either singular or plural grammatically. When modifying nouns with adjectives, speakers have to be careful to use the forms that agree in gender and number with those nouns. So this is a pretty simple concept, especially for speakers of Spanish, but let's look at just a few more simple examples. For example, meu avô é muito velho. So avô, of course, is masculine and singular, grandfather. So our adjective form, velho, has to be also masculine and singular. Same with o João, right? Masculine, singular. O João está irritado. So the adjective, irritado, we're also using the masculine singular form, although there are plural forms, feminine forms. Irritados, irritada. With João, we have to use irritado. Meu tio gosta de restaurar carros antigos. So here we have a plural, carros, and the plural form, Antigos. He likes to restore old cars or classic cars. Nós precisamos lavar a roupa suja. So a singular feminine. Roupa suja. Dirty clothes. Não acredito nas promessas políticas. So promessas is plural and feminine, as is políticas. Minhas irmãs estão assustadas. My sisters, plural feminine, estão assustadas. Plural feminine. So they have to agree in gender and number with the nouns they modify, regardless of where those nouns end up in the sentence. Okay, so enough about adjectives, determiners, agreement. We get it already, Professor Jason. <laughs> now I want to talk about some of the common structures in which descriptive adjectives are used in Brazilian Portuguese. Okay, the first one would just be when you have a noun and an adjective, right, in immediate proximity. So let's look at some examples. Procura um carro usado. Or ela comprou uma camiseta amarela. José é um ator talentoso. Joana é uma atriz famosa. Eles são atores famosos. So what we're seeing here is again that agreement in gender and number. O Brasil é um país muito grande. O Rio de Janeiro é uma cidade muito linda. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to read one more example, actually. Passaram uns filmes muito bons. So you might be a little bit confused, especially if you're used to the word muy or mucho in Spanish. What's going on here with muito? Well, in the last three examples, I'm going to repeat. O Brasil é um país muito grande. O Rio de Janeiro é uma cidade muito linda. And passaram uns filmes muito bons. In those examples, the word muito functions as an adverb, so it's not an adjective, it's an adverb that means very, right? When used in this way, its form is invariable. It's always 
muito. It doesn't matter if the thing is masculine or feminine. It's an adverb. It's always muito, and it always precedes the adjective it modifies. Okay? Let's look at the last two examples. Nós temos muitos amigos. And a Malu pediu muitas pizzas. Nós temos muitos amigos. And a Malu pediu muitas pizzas. So in these two examples, we have a different thing going on. Muitos and muitas function as quantifiers, right? Remember, we said quantifiers are determiners that work a lot like adjectives. And here that they mean a lot or many. So a lot of friends, a lot of pizzas. So when these quanti when the quantifier muito, muitos, muito, etc. is used to mean many or a lot, again, not very, but many, all of the forms of muito are inflected to show agreement in gender and number with the nouns they indicate. So like any determiner, these forms of muito always precede the nouns that they modify. Okay, another common context in which descriptive adjectives are used in Brazilian Portuguese, as we've seen in some of, many of our previous examples, right, is after a form of the verb to be. So we have two choices, right? Ser or estar. Let's tackle after ser first, okay? So after ser, adjectives are used to describe usually characteristics that are stable, intrinsic, inherent right, attributes of a person, place, or thing, more or less permanent. Look at these examples. Ele é simpático. Eles são ambiciosos. Minha irmã é generosa. As crianças dessa aula, as crianças dessa aula são tímidas, right, those kids, those students are shy. A noiva do João é super inteligente, so she's a very smart woman. Os filhos da Mônica são lindos demais. Okay, so again, here we have adjectives after ser, and they are naming attributes that are more or less permanent, inherent, intrinsic to these individuals, persons. Okay. Um, now, in the last two examples, just wanted to point out, João é a noiva do João é super inteligente. That's an intensifier. It's very common to use the word super inteligente, super, before any adjective to mean very or extremely. Um, very similarly, in the last example, os filhos da Mônica são lindos demais. It's common to follow an adjective like this with the word demais. It's also an intensifier and it means extremely. Now, as you know, there's another form of the verb to be in Brazilian Portuguese, which is estar. And, all, and adjectives are also used after estar in a number of ways. The most common one is the one described on this slide, right? And that is using adjectives after estar to describe a temporary state or condition. So let's look at these examples. Remember, we're describing, we're using estar and then an adjective to describe a temporary condition or state. Look at the examples. O Henrique está entediado. He is bored. Enrique is bored. It's a temporary thing. He's not a boring guy, but he's bored. Ela estava triste. She was sad or upset. She was sad. Eu estou bem cansado hoje. Eu estou bem cansado hoje. So, I'm tired today. Bem cansado means very tired. It's another intensifier, like muito. Minha amiga está doente. Minha amiga está doente. So, she's sick. Right? She's not a sick individual. She's sick today. I'm going to use está. Meus pais estão satisfeitos. So I might say that after they've just had a good meal, right? Meus pais estão satisfeitos. Or they're just satisfied with a particular thing that day. As alunas estão muito nervosas por causa da prova. So they're nervous because of the exam. So again, on this slide, adjectives with está to describe a temporary state or condition. Now, adjectives can also be used after the verb estar to emphasize that a characteristic is actually uncharacteristic or temporary of someone or something. So, for example, um, I might see someone and say, Por que você está tão sério? Why are you so serious today? What's the problem? Right? Or, você percebeu que o José está estranho hoje? Have you noticed that he's strange today? He's acting strangely today? Right? Or, a tua namorada estava muito misteriosa ontem. 
so she's not usually a mysterious woman. Mas ontem, ela estava muito misteriosa. She was that way yesterday. In kind of a related or similar way to use adjectives after estar is when we want to express kind of a spontaneous impression or reaction. So it doesn't mean that these people aren't usually this way. For example, the first, in the first example, I'm looking at a, a woman and I say, você está muito linda. I'm not saying she's not usually beautiful. I'm just emphasizing that that's my impression, my spontaneous reaction. Está muito linda. Or, ele está muito elegante hoje. Ele está muito elegante hoje. I'm not saying he's not usually a stylish, elegant person. I'm just saying, wow, my reaction right now. Ele está muito elegante hoje. Or I'm tasting a soup, I might say, mas que deliciosa que está esta sopa. Que deliciosa que está. So using adjectives with está to express a spontaneous impression or reaction. All right, finally, we're at the last section of the lesson, but it's an important one, so bear with me. We're going to talk about past participle forms of verbs and how those are used also as adjectives very frequently in Brazilian Portuguese. Now, let's talk about forming the past participles that are regular, right? Now, most past participles are regular, meaning that they're formed using the endings ado, if it's an AR verb, or ido, if we're talking about an ER verb, like conhecer or perder, also ido if we're talking about an IR verb like cumprir or reduzir. So we see that the regular forms would be forms like amado, preparado, conhecido, perdido, cumprido, and reduzido. These same forms, as you can see on this slide, can then be inflected to create different kinds of adjectives. So we started with a verb, we added the ending ado or ido, and then we're inflecting them even more, making them plural, amados, making them feminine, amada, feminine plural, amadas, and so forth, right? Let's look at conhecer, conhecido, masculine singular, conhecidos, plural masculine, conhecida, if it's feminine singular, or conhecidas, an adjective form built from a past participle that's plural and feminine. Now, one of the tricky things about learning any language is recognizing and knowing how to use, how to form and how to use irregular forms, right, in general. Now, some verbs in Brazilian Portuguese have irregular past participles. So we have the regular ones, amado, conhecido, reduzido, but we also have a bunch of irregular past participles, entregue, feito, limpo, dito, morto, so, if there's a verb that has an irregular past participle form, we have to just know that, we have to learn that, and then the form has to be memorized. Now, it's not realistic for me to teach you all of the irregular past participle forms in this lesson, it's not the point, but I do want to familiarize you with the concept and some of the most common ones that you'll hear all the time, okay? So, when it comes to verbs with irregular past participle forms, right, which do often get used as adjectives, that's why we're talking about them, there's a distinction to be drawn between verbs that have only an irregular form, right, they don't have a regular past participle, and then another class of verbs called abundant verbs, we'll see in a second, which have two forms, right, one regular past participle and another irregular past participle. So, on this slide, right, I'm showing, uh, it looks like six verbs that have only the irregular form. It's used in all the different contexts. So the verb abrir, to open, cobrir, to cover, dizer, to say or to tell, fazer, right, which gets used in many ways, to make, to do, ver, to see, and vir. Now, on the next two slides, I want to introduce a group of 10 verbs, also pretty high frequency verbs, so it's worth remembering that do have two forms. These are the verbs known as abundant verbs, if you want to Google those or look those up later, right? Verbos abundantes. So these are verbs which have a regular past participle form that's formed just by adding ado or idu, but they also have an irregular past participle form, right? So aceitar, to accept, is either aceitado or aceito. Anexar, to annex or to attach, right? Anexado, regular, anexo, irregular. Entregar, which means to turn something in or to deliver something. Entregado, regular, ado. 
and entregue, the irregular form. Gastar, which means to spend. Gastado, gasto. And then finally, imprimir, which means to print, right? Imprimido has a regular form, but it also has an irregular form, impresso. And here's that second group, right, to round out our ten of verbos abundantes, abundant verbs, that have two past participle forms, a regular form and an irregular form. Again, number six, limpar, to clean. Regular form is limpado. Irregular form is limpo. Matar, the regular form is matado. Matar means to kill, right, just like in, in Spanish. And the irregular form is morto. And then morrer, right, related verb, morrer means to die. The regular form is morrido, which Spanish does not have. And the irregular form is morto, right? Pegar, which means like to grab something, to pick something up, right? Pegar, regular form, pegado, because it's an AR verb, you just add ado. Irregular form is pego, or pegos, pega, pegas. And finally, number 10, suspender to suspend, has a regular form, suspendido, and an irregular form, suspenso, suspensus, etc. All right, so for verbs like the 10 we saw in the last two slides, those so-called abundant verbs, verbos abundantes, the question then emerges, well, when do I use the regular form and when do I use the irregular past participle form? Okay, so I have three kind of guidelines here, right, three situations. We're going to use the regular form. So, for example, um, gastado, gastado. When we're forming, when we're using the past participle in a perfect or compound tense with ter or haver. Nós temos gastado muito dinheiro. We have been spending a lot of money. Temos gastado, the full regular form in that compound verb tense. We're going to use the irregular form in passive constructions with ser. Muito dinheiro foi gasto no projeto. Muito dinheiro foi gasto. So a lot of money was spent. That's a passive construction with ser. Foi gasto. Irregular form. And the irregular forms are also used when we're using past participles as adjectives. Okay? So including with ser and estar. The candidate had to return the money spent on the campaign. A candidata tem que devolver o dinheiro gasto na campanha. Tem que, or teve que devolver, o dinheiro gasto na campanha. Again, use the regular form in compound verb tenses when it's a verb. Temos gastado, tínhamos gastado. Use the irregular form in passive constructions. Foi gasto, foram gastos. And also use the irregular form when we're using the past participle as an adjective. O dinheiro gasto. All right, so keeping those three guidelines in mind, what I want to do now is just go through some different types of uses of the past participle forms in Brazilian Portuguese. Let's start off by getting something out of the way. Let's start off by looking at examples of compound or perfect verb tenses. Okay? Now, in these examples, as you can see here on the slide, right, since the past participle is part of the verb tense, its form is invariable. In other words, it ends in O. Oh, it's not inflected to, re to reflect gender or number, right? And again, if a verb is an abundant form, now an abundant verb and has two forms, we're going to use the regular form anyway, right? So, o cozinheiro tinha preparado a comida. The cook had prepared the food. A minha vizinha tem perdido muito peso, right? She has lost a lot of weight, perdido. Você tem feito seus deveres em casa? Have you done your homework? Os seus deveres de casa. Você tem feito os seus deveres de casa? Have you been doing your homework? Ele tinha visto o filme três vezes. So those two examples are irregular forms, but there's only an irregular form for those two. We don't have a regular form, right? For the next three examples on this slide, right? A empregada, a empresa, nós. These are verbs that are abundant verbs. There are two options, but again, we're always going to use the regular if we have a choice in this particular usage, right, with a verb tense. A empregada tem acendido a luz. She's been turning on the light. The maid has been turning on the light. 
A empresa tinha gastado muito dinheiro. The company had spent a lot of money. And nós temos imprimido muitas fotos. We have been printing a lot of pictures. Okay? So again, this is the past participle form being used as a verb, right? In a verb tense, a compound verb tense. Next, let's look at some examples of past participle forms being used in passive constructions, passive voice constructions with the verb ser, right? So in these cases, the participle does function as an adjective, right, in a way. And so it does agree in gender and, and number with a noun. It modifies the subject of the sentence. And if there are two forms, the irregular form is preferred, is used. Not the regular, as we saw in the previous group, but the irregular. Let's look at some examples. A comida foi preparada. A comida foi preparada pelo cozinheiro. The food was prepared by the, by, by the cook. O brinquedo foi perdido pela criança. Regular forms. A janela foi aberta por ele. Foi aberta. It agrees with janela. As pizzas foram feitas pela Luisa. Again, with aberto e feito in those forms, those are the only forms that exist, the irregular forms. But again, with the next three examples, we have a choice, but in this passive construction, we use the irregular forms. A luz foi acesa pela empregada. The light was turned on by the maid. Muitos reais foram gastos no projeto. A lot of reais were spent on the project. And as provas foram impressas pelo professor. Provas impressas. Okay, so in addition to being used in compound or perfect verb tenses like tinha preparado or in passive voice constructions like a comida foi preparada, past participles are also used as adjectives in the three constructions that we looked at previously, right? Noun adjective, after ser, and after estar. Let's look at some examples of past participle forms being used as adjectives when you have the noun adjective kind of construction, right? In this case, of course, the participle form is going to agree with the noun in gender and number. Então, só vamos convidar pessoas conhecidas. Pessoas, feminine plural, conhecidas, feminine plural. A abelha, the bee, a abelha entrou pela janela aberta. Remember, aberta is the only form for this adjective, right? There is no, or the only form for the past participle for the verb abrir. So we have to use aberta. Um, but if we have two forms, like in the verb ascender or suspender, and we're using the past participles as adjectives, we're going to use the irregular form. No posso dormir com a luz acesa. I can't sleep with the light on. Or, esse time tem dois jogadores suspensos. Esse time tem dois jogadores suspensos. Suspensos agrees in number and gender, and it's the irregular participle form. And then on this slide, what we have, of course, are the past participle forms being used as adjectives after a form of the verb ser. So again, because they're adjectives, they're going to agree with the noun they modify in number and gender. And if we have a choice between regular and irregular forms, we're going to use the irregular forms. A Rosana é muito inteligente, should be underlined, e preparada. É muito inteligente e preparada. Preparada is the form from the participle. Singular, feminine. As praias do Rio, Rio de Janeiro, são bem conhecidas. Praias, feminine plural, conhecidas. Right? Remember, bem conhecidas means very well known. O José é um rapaz muito calado. Muito calado. So, José, who's a young man, um rapaz calado. That comes from the verb calar. And then finally, we have another verb here, participle form, corretos, that I didn't introduce in one of the previous slides, but it comes from the verb corrigir, which means to correct, and this is the irregular participle form, correto or corretos. Meus pais são muito corretos. In this sense, it means they're very um, proper, right? They're very good, very honest, right? Muito corretos. And then finally, to wrap this lesson up, let's look at past participle forms being used as adjectives after a form of the verb estar. Okay? So again, they're going to 
agree in number and gender with a noun. And if we have the choice between an irregular and a regular, we have to use the irregular form, right, as we see in the last two examples. First example, downtown is really hopping tonight. Está animado. O centro, singular masculine, está animado, singular masculine, from the verb animar, regular. O restaurante está fechado, from the verb fechar, regular, fechado, the restaurant is closed. Elas estão muito cansadas. Elas estão muito cansadas. They are very tired. Remember, we're going to use adjectives with estar to indicate a temporary state or condition. So, cansadas from the verb cansar, it's a regular form. Agrees in number and gender with elas. A casa dela está muito limpa. Remember, limpa is the irregular past participle of limpa. There's a regular form. Limpado, but we're going to use always as an adjective the form limpo, limpos, limpa, etc. A casa dela está muito limpa. Similarly, another irregular form to close out the lesson. Os documentos estão anexos. Anexos, they are attached. So we're using that irregular form of anexar as the adjective. The documents are attached. Os documentos estão anexos. All right, that does it for lesson 12 in the series. Hope you found my presentation on using descriptive adjectives to be useful and informative. If so, please share it with others. But let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions too, okay? Be sure to catch the next lesson or any previous lessons in the series. And don't forget to look me up on all your favorite social media platforms. I'm just about everywhere, as you know. Professor Jason, Spanish and Portuguese. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to visit the Professor Jason channel again soon. Until then, até breve, ciao.